What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, yeah. So Nick, Magomed, and Kalayev just came off a decision victory against Tiago Santos mm -hmm. this past weekend's UFC Fight Night main event. To me, this was a good win for Ankalaev, but a lot of people were looking for this to be his coming out party where he emerges as the division's number one contender. I don't think he quite got there. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that. You know, uh, Ankalaev came in at 16-1. and one. A lot of people thought that that loss that he took could have gone either way. And um, he's, he's obviously a top prospect, especially for the division that he's in because it's not really the deepest division in the UFC. Everybody knows that even though Glover Teixeira is the champion at 205, that, that's not going to be all that long-lived. He's going to probably f defend it once or twice, and then even if he does have successful defenses both times, he might retire after that because right. he's just getting old, and it's going to take six months to, to defend a title at that age and everything like that. So uh, I do see a lot of these contenders and these fighters at 205 looking at that belt as open for grabs and number one contenderships as open for grabs. And Ankle I have really had a, a chance last night, in my opinion, to make a statement and really put himself out there as like the best 205er that's uncrowned. And uh, he didn't quite live up to that. Obviously, we, we watched it and we all realized just how good he is at, at fighting and how dangerous he is, how powerful he is with his striking. But um, he didn't really get that exclamation point that he was probably looking for and that we were kind of expecting. Acting. Yeah, and I think if you're trying to become the number one contender and you're not quite a household name yet and you have people, people like Alexander Rakic in the division, you've got Anthony Lionheart-Smith who is always around in the top five and now that John Jones is no longer in the division, he's a potential contender. You do have Yuri Prohashka who's going to take on Glover. Mm -hmm. The people, most of the odds makers and fans alike think that Yuri's going to be the next champion. So you really got to do something special, right? And Tiago Santos is a very tough opponent. He's an opponent. He's somebody who I actually think there's an argument to be made that he beat John Jones. So yeah. if you have a guy like that of that caliber in front of you, I think you have to do just a little bit more. And it's not a knock on what Ankalaev did last night. He did a really good job of sticking to his game plan and winning the rounds that he needed to win. And one thing about the fighters from Dagestan that I respect the most about them is that no matter what you throw at them, no matter how crazy you get, you're not going to get them out of sorts. They stick to their game plan and they do what they're good at. You know, um, last night Magomed was just very calculated. He would walk Tiago down, get him against the fence, wait for Tiago to get out of place with some extensions on some shots or some flurries, try to bait him into some shots and then throw a really nice check hook followed by a straight two, some decent jabs, some good leg kicks. When he saw the opportunity for the body locks and the tie-ups, he took them. Um, I think it was a good performance. I just, if there is one thing that I could say as a point of critique, I wish he'd looked a little bit harder for the finish. Yeah, well, the power of both of these guys is what ruined this fight. If you didn't enjoy the fight, you know, it was a little bit of a stalemate. There was yeah. a lot of just waiting and feigning going on. There wasn't a ton of action. And each round, I'd say the average was about... 12 strikes landed or somewhere in that ballpark. So it wasn't a high volume fight that we, we are used to seeing from some of these guys, uh, even in that division. But I think that, yeah, uh, yeah. What's gosh? I'm I'm running blank on Magomed his name. And Magomed, Magomed. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I know I knew it was from Russian, but I and I almost went with Yuri, but I know that's a different <laughs> region. Uh, Magomed um, felt the power of Tiago Santos in that second round, and that was the clear round that I gave to Santos. Everything else, I think, was kind of up in the up in the uh, up in the air, and probably leaning towards Magomed because of the octagon control octagon control and the inactivity of the fight i mean both fighters weren't really pulling the trigger but when he landed the check hooks on santos santos noticed it and then was not really w wanting to engage and then like the same thing happened to him when magomed felt the power of santos he didn't really want to just jump in and engage because i think both guys could have shut the lights out with one shot last night and uh they wanted to play it safe because santos is up against the you know, back against the wall, one and four in his last five as of now. And, and Magomed, you know, he had already suffered that loss. He wants that perfect record, but also he wants to move uh, up the rankings and not take a step backwards. Yeah, totally. And I like a fight between Magomed and Anthony Lionheart Smith. I think Anthony Lionheart Smith, he's the, if you beat Lionheart and the guy who's almost impossible to finish, always professional, always at the top of the heap, then you can kind of start to emerge yourself as a number one contender. The problem that Ankalaev is up against right now is that everybody's really hot on Rakic and everybody is flaming hot on Yuri. And mm -hmm. a lot of people think he's going to be the next champion. So you've got to do something to jump 
Rakic, who will probably get that Yuri fight if Yuri is to defeat Glover. You got to do something special and you got to put a statement on it. Now, I believe Jan Blahovic versus Rakic has been preserved and moved to a later date. I'm not sure exactly what date that is, which does set up a Lionheart Smith versus Magomed fight that I think would be a lot of fun. But then you have to look the other direction and say, what do you do with Tiago Santos? I feel so bad for the guy. I mean, I truly think that there's an argument to be made that he defeated John Jones in that fight. But if you look at his actual record, it says one and four in his last five. Several of those were KO losses. Um, you know, he was submitted by Glover Teixeira after throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at him. So you, you've already changed weight classes. So you don't have that ace in the hole, so to speak. And a lot of guys, when they're having some struggles, they'll say, well, I'm just going to get a fresh coat of paint at a new weight class. He's already pulled that card. So it's kind of hard to determine what you do next for Tiago, especially being 38 years old and suffering some pretty bad knockouts in the last couple of years. Yeah, and it does stink when you always uh, look at that option of moving up or down a weight class, but you've already done that before. Yeah. So a lot of people go, well, maybe he's got the speed if he's moving up or if, if he's moving down. Maybe he's going to have a size advantage if he's going against some smaller guys. Santos has been there, done that. He's done everything in this sport besides basically win the title. Yeah. And I, I do feel for the guy because it seems to me like he's kind of uh, in that situation where you might wind up getting your walking papers sooner than you you probably deserve yeah. them. But one and four in your last five is rough. There's very few people that can go one and five, one and six, and Cody Nolov is maybe the only one. Yeah. But um, it, it, it's very difficult when you watch these guys who literally rise all the way to the top, some of them all the way up to the belt, and then they just have a, a fall down. And Santos has been a bit of a, a thorn in the side of everybody that's a top five, top contender at 205 for many, many years. But at, it seems at this point there's a little bit of a changing of the guard. There's a lot of new faces coming in. There's a lot of old dogs that are making their way out. Either they've been cut, they retired, or now they're not really uh, in the topic of top five conversations. Or they've become the champion. Right, right. <laughs> or there's been yeah. the one left. The one yeah. old dog left is the champion. But, uh, you know, over the next couple of years, we're going to see a major facelift at 205. And we already know the characters that are going to be playing the major roles in it. It's, it is Ankalev. It is Prohachka, it's Jamal Hill. It, yeah. th these are the people that are coming forward. And you've got the older fed the, the veterans like Santos and uh, Jan Blahovic even, and all of these guys that are there right now, but maybe 24 months from now, they're not going to be there. So I think there's going to be a lot of interesting matchups that happen. And unfortunately, some, some, some cuts to some fighters that we all know and love that just simply don't serve the UFC anymore. And they're going to wind up weaning them out. Maybe we'll see them in Eagle FC. Maybe we'll see them in Bellator, something like that. But, uh, I, I definitely feel bad for, uh, for Santos. And I think that ankle is a legit threat at two Oh five, even though he didn't have that statement finish to have a guy like Santos fighting the way he was fighting and backed up against the cage. The entire 25 minutes, uh, was, was very impressive. Yeah, it certainly wasn't in today's day and age. It really is crazy how quickly you can go from main eventing to potentially getting your walking papers. It's insane. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Drop us a comment and let us know, did Magomed Ankalaev do enough for you guys to think that he's the number one contender? Nick and I obviously stated that we would have liked to seen a little bit more. Until the next one, guys, have a wonderful day. Peace. Peace.